What's up everyone? My plan for today is to start figuring out the oil pan that Clayton cut on this fancy EDM machine. I need to weld it back together of course and I also need to shorten up the pickup tube which I have on there right now. So I have to do some measuring and I have to figure out where to cut it, exactly how I'm going to cut it and then weld it back together. Uh, but the first thing I'm going to do today is I'm going to take the timing cover off again. A subscriber pointed out that I should have probably put Loctite on the bolts and I never did. So I'm going to pull it apart quick, re-Loctite and put Loctite on the bolts to make sure they don't back off because the last thing you want is for those to back off and the cam gear fall off and then you're going to have a mess. So I'm going to do that now and then I'm going to start on the, uh, the oil pan and the oil pickup tube. All right. do one at a time. Someone also made a comment um, about what I had said about taking the oil pump off and they actually said that uh, that they never worry about that. They just take it off put it back on. Uh, what I read online when I was building my engine was that you had to make sure that it was lined up properly or else it would uh, wear the oil pump prematurely. So whether that's true or not, I don't really know. Oops. All I know is uh, that's what I read, so that's kind of how I figured it was supposed to go. So you can make your own conclusions there, as far as that goes. I hate when you're looking for something, you can't find it, and then it turns out it's right in front of your face the whole time. Yeah, that sucks. Perfect. I mean, I guess it's just like this, uh, everybody says you're supposed to put the balancer on, or not everybody, I suppose, but I've read that you're supposed to have the balancer on to line it up properly before you tighten it down. I mean, I'm sure you could not do it and it would be fine. I'm just going by what other people who build these engines have said. Previous video where I was putting my engine together, which is a year ago on my Nova, I actually... I had to take the oil pump apart, the front cover off, and then use feeler gauges to make sure that it uh, that it was shimmed properly. And that's the way I read that everybody said to do it. So uh, it was pretty much, you know, that was pretty much the first LS I'd ever built from scratch. So I wanted to make sure I hopefully did it right the way it was supposed to be done. I always find it funny that on regular small blocks, I built tons of them over the years. And I mean, there is torque specs for the timing cover. There's torque specs for, you know, stuff like that. And I never worried about it. For some reason with these ones, I'm always seem to be concerned that I have to do it uh, to a certain torque spec, which I'm sure, especially on something like the timing cover would never matter. All right, so that's that. Now I have the uh, pan on, and this is the piece that Clayton cut off. So if I fit that back on, I want to know how far the pickup tube was originally. So if I go like this, it's two inches. And now if I look at the pan here, it's in about the middle. So if I go here or say here, I guess I can use this. Let's put this here down to here. And it's like two and an eighth. So there's an eighth of an inch space here between here and the bottom of the pan. So now if I take out, I mean basically I think if I take out, this is an inch and a half, I believe that he cut off. Yeah, inch and a half exactly. So really if I take an inch and a half off this tube, it's gonna be exactly where it needs to be versus the pan, and that should get us where we need to be. That's what I'm going to do. I drilled the spot welds of this bracket that holds it in. It still wouldn't come off. I guess it's somehow fused in there. I don't know if you can see that. You can almost see some coppery stuff there. So I don't know how they weld this on. So I had to hacksaw this off. 
which is fine. It's not made a hole, but if you can see, there's kind of a thicker lip here. So I'm gonna cut it just at that lip, and then I'll cut it just below that lip, the inch and a half, and then I'll be able to weld that back together. I'm gonna use a hacksaw so that I can do it more carefully, slower, and only cut. I guess first I should mark, I don't know if it really matters, but we wanna make sure that this gets welded back on the same way it's pointing right now. I made a little mark there and a little mark there. So then when I cut it, then I'll just line those marks up again and then it'll be positioned the same way it was before. There you go, that's cut right along the line. It's a little, little higher right there, so I'll just smooth that out. I'll always have to clean it, make sure there's no shavings in there. Okay, so now, I have to mark out an inch and a half. I broke my tape measure, so all I have right now is just this uh, part of a tape measure, but that's okay. It works pretty much just where the curve starts. So hopefully that's not gonna cause too much problems. I see it's a little, however GM bends it, but, so I'll have to get in there and probably round it out a little bit when I uh, before I can weld it on. As you can see, it's kind of bent there. It's not very round. So I'll have to try to round it out a bit here. That's not too bad. I'm gonna have to try it on the engine and then see what I have to do there. Okay, so there it is, positioned on there. So that looks pretty good. I'll just have to like smooth it out a little bit, clean it up before I weld it, obviously. And so that's going to be my next step is uh, welding it on. You just have to make sure that it's uh, straight and it looks good. I actually have another one here, the, the one that Randy, I don't know if this one's good. I think I have another one here I can kind of compare to make sure it looks the same in terms of the angles and whatnot. I think that's pretty close. But yeah, I'll prep this to get it ready to weld now. Okay, so now I welded it back together. Turned out pretty good. Now what you want to do is just take a little bit of something, soapy water or whatever, put it in there, and then just give it a and I see a couple tiny tiny pinholes there. So then you'll want to go over those and then repeat until there's no pinholes. I see there was one tiny one there and one little tiny one there. You want to make sure it's well sealed so now i'll just go over those couple spots and then it should be good all right so i got the pickup bracket just welded back on there so i just had to cut it to length usually on a normal old school small block they say put a nut like that on there and then put the pan on so the nut is if i turn the nut the opposite way it doesn't fit so it's nice right close to the bottom of the pan where it's supposed to be and so that's pretty good there's a little bit of a pain in the ass to weld it. Maybe I should have just migged it. I tried, I tigged it and I had to fix a couple pinholes and stuff, but uh, it's welded on there solid now. Next thing is uh, to start welding this oil pan up, I guess. So I'm gonna start off by saying uh, I'm not a professional welder and uh, I've never welded a cast uh, aluminum oil pan before. But uh, yeah, it's I'm welding it and it's welding. I mean, it's not the greatest here. It welded not bad, but I'm pretty sure it cracked. I heard this big God damn So I don't know if I got it too hot, bitch. I'm assuming. And I welded the back there. I'm trying to go slow now and just do small sections at a time because maybe I got it too hot and that's why I think it cracked there. It'll weld up and it'll hold oil, but uh, it might not look the prettiest, but oh well. What are you gonna do? I'm gonna keep, uh, keep slowly welding it until it's welded. 
Uh, I also have to do the shit horse one at some point, so maybe by the time I do one, I'll have a little better idea and I'll be able to do that one a little better. I'm done for the night. I got it about 95% welded, but it kind of cracked in a couple spots. I don't know. So I'm going to let it leave it overnight and then I'll weld those couple other spots and then hopefully go over the spot where it cracked. I mean, pretty much it only cracked like right at the very front. I don't know if you can see it right there. So I don't know. I mean, maybe it's just because the casting is really shitty or it wasn't clean enough. I mean, I tried cleaning it as good as I could, but when I was welding, you can see these little porous little holes. Oil was actually coming out of those holes. So, I mean, maybe it's just a really, really crappy casting. I don't know. I mean, a lot of places it welded and it didn't crack. I guess I'll just uh, hit it again tomorrow and uh, hopefully it'll be okay. I'll fill it with water or solvent or something and we'll see if it leaks, I guess. So I came out here yesterday and uh, I finished welding the pan up. I ended up uh, doing a little bit of reading. I cleaned it with uh, non-chlorinated brake clean. Chlorinated brake clean will uh, give off some pretty uh, nasty fumes when you weld. So you have to use the non-chlorinated. Shout out to Finnegan, Finnegan's Garage. He's the one who, uh, where I learned that from. So that's cool. Uh, and then I cleaned it with a stainless steel brush like they tell you to. And then it actually uh, welded better and I was able to get the whole thing welded up without cracking and I went over the cracks where it had cracked, ground it down a bit and re-welded it. Uh, so now it's actually fully welded. I ground some of it down like to smooth it out to see. Um, there is some pinholes. I filled it with water. I mean, you can, obviously the welds are, you know, I mean, it wasn't welding very good, but like right there is a little pinhole. And then maybe these other ones. I'm gonna just go over it, re-weld up all those little pinholes. I'll look, I got, I got this magnifying glass thing so I can look really close and try to see and then I'll mark where it looks like there's pinholes. And then I'll weld it up and uh, try filling it with water again and hopefully it's good. Honestly, I don't know if I would recommend doing this, but if you have to, uh, I mean, this pan will work obviously. It doesn't look the greatest, but I mean, I'll smooth it out a little bit. Um, but I guess it didn't really cost me any money compared to buying a pan for 200 plus dollars that might not fit. I mean, from the look of it, the only pan I can get that will work is like one of the Holly pans. And they're $400, $350 American from Summit or wherever. I mean, it's that or use something like this, but I mean, maybe if I had cleaned it better or baked it maybe to get the oil, because even after I cleaned it, there was still oil coming out of that, where I show earlier that porous section, there was still oil coming out of there. So, I mean, I, I don't know what to do to get that out. I guess if it was a new pan, maybe it would have welded better. I also thought maybe if you cut the bottom off and just weld a flat piece of aluminum on top, that might be better because then you're welding an actual piece of aluminum to the cast. It might work better and there's less chance of it cracking. I'm gonna end this video now and uh, I'll, I'll uh, next time you see the pan, it'll be all ready to go. I'll just, I'll weld up the pinholes and then I think what I'm gonna do after that, I'm gonna test it, hopefully it doesn't leak and then I'm probably gonna put like a coat of GB weld all the way around the weld just to fill in any like small spots where I couldn't get or you know, just to be on, the, even if it stops leaking, just to be on the safe side plus it'll smooth it out a little bit. Um, yeah, so next time you see it, it'll be on the engine probably. So uh, until next time, uh, like, comment, subscribe, and uh, we'll check you later.